these children, now grown up, are speaking out about an institution they believe to this day is failing to protect young people from predatory paedophiles and to learn from mistakes of the past. Emily, who doesn't want to be identified, was sexually abused from the age of four by a ministerial servant of the Jehovah's Witnesses in Loughborough. Aged eight, she reported it to church elders, those in charge of governing and disciplining the congregation. At that point, I had a conversation. I was very young and sort of said, I don't like the way he touches me. What followed was a series of failings that allowed him to continue sexually abusing children for years to come, which victims say is a larger cultural problem within the organisation. There was a phrase they used a lot, which is liars will not inherit God's kingdom, which is basically saying you're going to die at Armageddon because you're a liar. Speaking about Jehovah became a wonderful joy. Jehovah's Witnesses have a gentle image of those spreading the faith, but believe that only they will be saved from imminent Armageddon, as depicted here in their literature. There's a mistrust of non-believers, and it's one of the reasons why serious allegations such as child abuse often aren't taken to the police, but instead handled internally. They had a similar kind of meeting with him about it all, and unbeknownst to me, he actually admitted it to them. And then after that, they continued to tell me that I'd misunderstood it. There was no kind of reprimand for him. I still had to interact with him. I actually got told off for not sitting on his knee. The abuser, Peter Stewart, repented and said there were no other victims, when in fact there were at least four others, including two sisters, who were speaking out together for the first time. Because they believed him, he was allowed to continue in the congregation and the, my abuse and my sister's abuse was allowed to continue. Amelia didn't report her abuse until after he'd been jailed for abusing two other children. When he came out of prison, she tried to stop him rejoining the congregation. Well, they decided that they didn't believe me because I didn't have a, a credible second witness um, because they have obviously the two witness rule. Within the Jehovah's Witness Church, Yes. A second person has to have seen what happened. They do, and it's not just the two witness rule. It, the, the second witness has to be a credible witness. And at this point, your sister is the other witness, is that right? That's correct, yes. Rachel, the elder sister who was abused first, wishes she'd spoken out sooner. I wanted to protect her, I wanted... You know, I just wanted her. Uh, she was amazing to me, like... And... Well, you felt like you'd let her down because you hadn't raised what was happening to you. Yeah. I always thought that if I'd have said that first time, if I'd have spoken out that first time when he'd kissed me, um, it wouldn't have happened to her. Peter Stewart did apologise for the abuse in this letter to the girl's mother, but even then their testimony was not trusted. I mean, from everything you're saying to me, it sounds like the, uh, the weight and gravitas of a known child sex offender is more worth more than that of three women. Yes. Amelia successfully sued the organisation for failing to protect her. Rachel says they both could have been saved years of pain. Had they have taken note of that child that he admitted to, mm. it wouldn't have... It just wouldn't... I could have had a few years as a child. There are 130,000 Jehovah's Witness members in England and Wales with a large central office campus in Essex and 8.6 million members worldwide. If elders receive a complaint about child abuse, they will contact the head office here in Chelmsford and they will consult their legal department as well as this handbook, Shepherd the Flock of God. Only elders can open it, and they are all men with no external child protection training. So what does the book tell them? Well, it reinforces much of what we've already heard. Eyewitnesses, there must be two or three eyewitnesses, not just people repeating hearsay. No action can be taken if there's only one witness. What's missing is any urgent action to protect child welfare. You're not encouraged to go to outside agencies. You won't be criticised for going to the police, but you're not 
actively told to do so. And if there isn't a second witness, well, it seems that's where the matter ends. Jehovah's Witnesses say the two-witness rule only relates to whether or not the accused should potentially be expelled from the religion, rather than whether they should be reported to the police. However, the book suggests allegations are sealed and kept in a confidential file. One former Jehovah's Witness elder, who left the religion because of the way it deals with child abuse, believes the police should be demanding access to those records. If it was, say, a gym franchise, or if it, were, if it was, say, a public school and they were keeping records on teachers or gym, or gym members or gym instructors about these individuals being predators and not passing these on to the police, these institutions would be all over our front pages, I like to think. In 2016, Australian Royal Commission investigators did obtain files that Jehovah's Witnesses kept on allegations of child abuse there. They found of 1,006 alleged sexual abusers, none had been reported to the police. Jehovah's Witnesses say any records they keep are for the purposes of protecting children. Lacey Jones was abused from the age of 10 for over a decade by an elder in the congregation in the West Midlands. When confronted in 2019, Clifford Whiteley confessed to other elders to some of the abuse. But Lacey has waived her anonymity to explain what happened when she told them she was going to the police. The first thing they said was, it's your absolute right, it's your absolute right to go to the police. However, what they don't tell you is that they will not cooperate. She asked the elders why they wouldn't hand over evidence from the confession. What was their reasoning for not helping with the investigation? Because Clifford told them in confidence, um, but also that in order to be able to talk to the police, they would need to step down from their position as elders. So I waited for you know, at least one to say, therefore, I'll step down and whatever, whatever, I'll, I'll say yeah. we've had the confession. Nothing. Silence. They didn't look at me. They were looking at the floor. They were looking at the ceiling. And I just said, but he's a paedophile. And again, without looking at me, they just said, yeah, we know. Police eventually got a record of the confession via a warrant and Whiteley was jailed for nine years in 2020. Suppose that someone is convicted and put in jail. Well, that would apply to... Our this is one of the messages to the flock, telling them only to seek truth from elders, warning them not to believe negative reports about the church in the media, not even if someone is jailed for a crime. Or someone is found guilty by men, as Jesus was. It doesn't mean that he's guilty in the sight of God. So, brothers, we really have to think about these things. All four women we spoke to believe the organization's leaders put protecting its reputation ahead of protecting children and that the religion's distrust of non-believers allows them to keep doing that. They kind of, I suppose, almost put themselves on a pedestal. They call their religion the truth and they are the only ones that have got the correct religion and everything else is just incorrect. You're in like a bubble, like you don't really have any interactions with the outside world, with general stuff. And actually, people that aren't part of that religion are called worldly and you're discouraged from having anything to do with them. In a statement, the organisation said, when elders learn that someone in the congregation is accused of child sexual abuse, they immediately take steps to ensure the matter is reported to the external secular authorities, as may be required by law, or if it appears that a child may be in danger of abuse. Elders do not shield a perpetrator from the legal consequences of his sin, do not interfere with law enforcement and leave criminal matters to the secular authorities. Any suggestion that Jehovah's Witnesses cover up child abuse or in any way discourage or frown upon reporting allegations to the secular authorities is absolutely false. The independent inquiry into child sexual abuse is due to report its findings into religious organisations, including Jehovah's Witnesses, tomorrow. Whether their senior members of the church will act on them is another matter. Jason Farrell, Sky News.